All right, go ahead and give her the beans. <laughs> it's amazing the power on tap, isn't it? It is. Well, here she is, ladies and gents. This is my 2022 Can-Am X3 Maverick XMR Turbo RR. God, that's the name. It's the XMR, it's the mud version, so we got the snorkel. As you can tell, she's already broken in. We took her out for a rip. Roll the clip. Good way to break in a new machine there. Oh, did Alex shut off? Oh, he's cleaning it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh man. When in doubt, throttle out. That's the nutrient mud of Florida. It's good for your skin. <laughs> oh, oh, gotta get the backup camera. Wow. Got a little speck of dirt. Don't mind that. <laughs> yeah, let's see if he does it right. <laughs> I love how he just drove in slow and buried it. Good times. It's beautiful. He's a he's a Florida man in training. You know what I mean? Never go slow in the mud hole and try and go fast out. You gotta go fast in and hope you make it slowly out. Me. Gotta tell you, babe, well, being in a tank, pretty nice. I know, I like pretty it. Pretty nice. We got AC radio, backup camera, and it's almost impossible to get stuck. And we're clean, kinda. Look at that. Such a good brother. <laughs> it's just all traction. This thing is just pure traction. Dude, solid, solid ride right there. Well, Hell yeah. So as soon as the first time I rode with Garrett in one of these, like two or three years ago, I was completely hooked and knew I had to have one. Never really made financial sense until the new model, the 2022, came out last fall, and so I immediately put an order in in September. I wasn't able to pick it up until last week. There's a lot of shortages on computer chips and the dashes and the whatever. So I waited it out and I finally got the machine. This is one of the few new XMRs, Turbo RRs that are in Florida right now and I'm excited to have it. So lots of plans for suspension upgrades. Obviously you're gonna do some radius rods and get a little bit more support because this is definitely a weak point on these machines is the radius rods, the, con the trailing arms and the control arms. So definitely need to upgrade those ASAP. Well, after buying a side-by-side, -side, I knew the first thing I had to get for this thing was a set of wheels and tires. So hit up my boys at Billet Specialties. They don't make wheels for side-by-sides yet. So I went to the next bag option and I went, got some wheels from Weld. I knew I wanted bead locks. So I got on their website and started looking around. Garrett's got them on his new machine. And so I thought I would put them on mine as well. Obviously different wheel, but I mean, these guys have a reputable name in the industry and I thought that it would be a great wheel to have and I knew I needed beadlocks. And then as far as tires goes, I hit up the guys side-by-side -side blog, 
I'm going to put a link in the description. They have an affiliate account to get these things on the cheap. These are the ITP Terra hooks, which are perfect for out here in Florida, riding in the mud and the sand. No way is this sponsored by any means. I pay full retail to support these guys who do this for a living. I have a different career and do this for fun, so it's important to me to support these guys who are here to support their families. So ITP tear hooks, weld wheels. Let's get these things mounted and on the rig because this is gonna make it look like a completely different machine. Okay, so when picking wheels out, I was looking at 15 by 10s, 15 by 8s, 7s, 9s. I didn't really know what to go, so I started to ask my buddies. These are a 15 inch wheel, beadlock wheel by weld. It is the, the Raptor beadlock, and these are 15 by 8. So pretty wide wheel to be running on the stock side by side, but hey, you know what? Lock right here. Hold it right up there. So in case we have a collision with a tree or something crazy, holds that tire on because I don't want to be using starting fluid in the middle of nowhere trying to mount the tire back on the rim. Let's get these tires on. So first thing I like to do is take the valve out of the valve stem. That's the first thing I do, and then the last thing I do is put this back in after it's full of air. Look at that little boxo tool. Look at the meats on this thing. Those are some deep treads, aren't they? That is. Wow. Get it centered up here. Now for the bolt for the heat lock. When you get all these set up, I always put anises on the bolts in case you ever have to back them out. I'm not locked in there trying to strip out the wheel, end up missing one of them or something stupid. So I'm gonna go through and put all the washers on these and anises so that we can rock and roll and get them on the car. And we're on. Okay, so I've just put anises on all these bolts. And as I was doing it, I asked Sam, Sam, when do you not use anises? If you're doing ferrous metals, I iron, there's not really a lot of need of it big time. But when you're a non-ferrous, i.e. rice, bronze, aluminum, that sort of thing, you might ought to have it on it because when, it's, when those two run together like that and you're non-ferrous, you have a tendency to gall and what it is. And when you start to take it apart, you're done. You're done. This is an extreme heat, high heat, where it's a continuum on the high heat, then you can put it in no matter the metal on the thing. But other than that, this the same tip we give it to start. Okay. Now I know y'all are gonna crucify me for this, but everyone's got their own technique of doing this. I'm gonna show you mine. You tell me how you would do it. So I like to start one, bring it all the way down. Other side. Coming at 90 degrees to that one. Let me stop you in mid-flight here and ask you this. Ben's you doing it your way, have you ever had any problems with doing it your way? No, it's always worked. Good enough, then if it works, let's go with it. And then I run it back with just a hand ratchet so mm -hmm. I get it about, put my middle finger on here, about 20 foot pounds. Okay, good. If you can see the width of this tire and the width of the wheel, I'm gonna have to use the Cheetah to beat this tire. So I like to run air to the valve stem as I'm doing the cheetah. And presto, there it is. There it is. And you saw it first right here on camera. That man right there was doing the process. <laughs> okay, so back to it. This is a bone stock machine. Ignore those speakers because those haven't been released yet. I'll tell you more about them in probably two months. I did just put this windshield on. Now this thing is in dire need of some wheels and tires. The difference in stock wheels and tires versus some 32s make a huge difference. These are 32 by 10 by 15 inch tires. They're the ITP tear hooks with the weld 15s. And uh, time to swap them over. Oh, and then I had them throw a roof on. I'm probably not gonna do a cage. I was really, I was really surprised after I bought this thing. I knew you could buy a lot of stuff for them, but Getting on the internet, you can easily drop a hundred grand on one of these machines. It's, it's
It's crazy, and they are so much fun to drive. If you haven't seen, Motion Raceworks now has a side-by-side -side division, and they've got some really cool aftermarket bumpers for Can-Ams and Polaris alike. Go check it out on their website. I'll put a link in the description to Motion Side-by-Side. -side. Look at the difference in ride height of the stock XMR tire and the ITPs. I'm getting an extra about four or five inches. Crazy. About a little bit more width, probably another two inches. Look at that difference. That's gonna make it look quite a bit higher That's well there she is with the wheels on it whole different look of a machine dang i love it these things are so much bigger i mean look at this it comes up to the middle of my middle of my thigh right i'll do a full speed launch without it broken in yet it needs 10 hours it's got 3.6 on it Oh, that thing is so rapid, isn't it? Man, I love it. It's great. Oh, so cool. That is most of All right, so the key's in it. It's just like a weird little, kind of like all Can-Am and CDs yeah, nowadays. Push just push it in there and hold down the start with your foot on the brake. Now I've got it in four-wheel drive right now. That seems to be the way they handle the best. Otherwise, they really just spin the tires. But it's got dynamic power steering. We got diff lock mud or trail depending on what you're bogging in high and low gear it's always really important to use the low gear especially when you're bogging so you don't burn up your belt but all right she's all yours yeah this is something they really need to improve on this little gear selector shifter is just not doing it for me so now it's in but you just have to just give it just give it some throttle to catch up with okay. yeah because it's a bell driven clutch you gotta... yep exactly The easiest to see out of. All right, go ahead and give her the beans. All right, y'all, Zach's never driven a side-by-side -side yeah, like this. So since this is their newest, highest horsepower model, it's making a little over 200 horsepower. Highest horsepower? Gonna throw in the keys. Oh, did I already bend that? Oh no, that's already in there. It'll this, is, this is where, uh, there's a lot of problems on these back here. These radius rods bend and the holes for these bolts like kind of wallow out. Mm. So you gotta re-support it. So I've got all new radius rods and back plates on the way a little thicker oh yeah pull the red handle all right what i want you to do when you go into high gear i just want you to floor it so you can feel it spin go right, floor it. <laughs> Dude, isn't that crazy they ain't making them like they used to <laughs> no Don't slow down before that. You don't slow down. No. no. Dude, oh my god. Isn't that crazy? That is insane. All right, put it put it in four. Four? Yeah, put it in four. That is insane. Alright, you're good. You're the you don't start. have to slow down when you hit big whoops like that. They you're take it this really well. For me not to buy one. I know, go. Isn't that crazy? Oh yeah. This is 
the nuts. It's unreal how much power is I know. available. I know. <laughs> I know. That is the wildest thing I've uh, ever felt. Dude, the first time I rode in one, I was hooked. I had to buy one. I had to do it. I couldn't wait. So as soon as I rode with it, in as soon as I rode in Garrett's for the first time, I knew I had to have one. So I saved up and I finally got myself my dream machine. Dude, what kind of power is this? 200 horsepower. It feels like a lot more power. All right, y'all. Well, that's a quick little rundown on my new unit. Hope you guys like this episode. I know I'm kind of boosting about my new toy, but hey, I've been saving up and I've been wanting one of these for a long time. So I'm excited to share it with y'all. Thanks for watching me. Subscribe, like, leave me a comment, and we'll see you on the next episode. As a fellow car guy, I know it's super easy to forget to take care of yourself, especially when you're at the track. We're all drinking Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper. This toothbrush is only $39. It's a great electric toothbrush. That's what I use every day. Normally they're $59, but if you click the link in the description below or use my coupon code QDNASK, you can get this toothbrush for only 39 bucks. Buy one for yourself, your girlfriend, whoever. They are an awesome toothbrush. It's basically the same thing as a Sonicare except a tenth of the price. So go get one. They send you a new brush at every three months so you don't have to worry about it. It's a great deal.